guys i'm really like a cheshire cat because i've been doing these ordinary videos and as i keep on saying i'm really enjoying it it's just like being in a sweetie shop you know and trying lots of different sweets trying all this skincare and finding out what it does and like i said since i was a teenager my dad was always telling people you know how much of a sponge i was and how i loved learning and to this day i get really excited if i'm like oh let me find out about that and see if i can learn how that works it really really interests me but i said to kev last night my husband my vitamin c video goes up tomorrow but you know every video i said i've got so many lovely comments and people have loved it but what if i've got this one wrong you know what if i've not explained it well and people are just like what the hell were you rambling about or and he he was saying to me you've got to not think like that like if you if you've got a way of explaining it and it's working then why do you think this is not going to work i think it's just because i put so much effort i put my heart and soul into these videos and it's it's great that you guys are loving them but i just think well what if i do one that doesn't make sense you know anyway i've just went and had a look and i've got lots of comments and lots of you are finding it really useful so i love that i i just want to be explaining things in a way that helps you go oh okay so i'll be able to use this there the other thing is there's so many comments on these videos and questions that i'm really battling to keep on top of comments every day um you sorry i eyelash problem um you should get if nothing else a little heart a little email telling you that i have hearted your comment which means that i've read it and i thought if i can at least acknowledge to people i've read your comment and and absorbed it not just skimmed over it i properly sit down and read them and when i've done that i click on the heart button unless you're saying something horrible and i'm not going to heart it but um, that hasn't happened so far on these videos um but i just wanted to let you know i i am reading all of the comments and i don't necessarily have time to answer everything um but i'm trying as hard as i can to do okay, so oils we're doing a video about oils and i started off my notes doing this about all oils but oh my goodness there's such a list and i was like oh but people are going to ask about coconut oil oh but people are going to ask about kakadu oil people are going to ask about cacao oil there's so many different oils that it would be a very very long video and a very complicated video to cover them all and so i thought you know what the theme here is the ordinary skincare so i'm just going to cover the four oils that they do or they do three oils and then there's one that i've already talked about in the vitamin c but i'm going to talk about from the point of view of the oil um, because it is a vitamin c derivative in essential fatty acids which is an oil um and i may yeah i will make mention to a couple of other oils in in context this is the best way to do it so firstly let's talk about the terms that you often see talked about in skincare oils so you will see them talked about as being organic so organic means that it's basically it's been processed without chemicals that's the basic interpretation but you know i'm learning as i get older and the more i do youtube and the more things that happen in my life like getting a dog that there is literally nothing that isn't controversial <laughs> every single thing has a controversy or a debate surrounding it um, and it's the same with organic there are there are arguments out there about what organic means but i feel like at, at its base is something that is created or produced without using chemicals then there's unrefined you've got refined and unrefined um, and i've seen that against oils as well and unrefined basically means that it's minimally processed that it's as close to its natural um, state as possible um, you've got saturated and unsaturated but they aren't really used very much you'll never see them in the title this is a saturated oil um, but it, it is important but i think that it's it's too complex to discuss in this video i did again initially think about including it um, but i know that a lot of you have been overwhelmed by the amount of information in the videos and i don't think it's something that you will need to look into to decide whether or not you use an oil because it's it's it needs you need to go further than it's just saturated or unsaturated you need to then go is it polyunsaturated how much linoleic and oleic acid is in the oil you know it's a, it's a bit more complex than that and there is stable versus unstable oils and you've probably been made aware of the stable versus unstable argument with the vitamin c so stable means that it will have a longer shelf life and it won't the, the product won't be um, broken down or changed by light or heat whereas unstable means it will go rancid quickly with an oil you know you can't as soon as you open it and it's exposed to he uh, heat and light and air etc that it will 
change. Interestingly, there was a really good blog I read talking about how she didn't basically believe in facial oils other than one coconut oil, basically, which is saturated, because she said everything else has no storage, has no shelf life at all and will oxidize as soon as you open it and it will oxidize on your skin. So she didn't believe in using facial oils um, until this new one, Squalane, came out and now she's on board with Squalane as well as coconut oil. I can actually kind of see what she means. I do understand that because um, most oils are very unstable and although they are made in such a way to make them more stable, they are still unstable um, and will still oxidize and they won't most of your oils will only last a couple of months um, and you know the efficacy of them will go down during that time the more you open the bottle the more they're exposed to air and light and heat etc the more off they'll go and the less potent they'll be. The final term to talk about is probably the most important one which is cold pressed. Um, cold pressed means that it is extracted using low heat um, and that it is kept below a certain temperature. Um, and the reason that this is really important is if it's extracted at high heat, um, there can be some chemical residue left and also the high heat changes the oil. However, when it's cold pressed, it's not cold. That's a bit misleading. It is a low heat, but it's still a heat. Um, and so it's actually better to have a CO2 extraction, but there aren't many companies from what I can see that use this CO2 extraction. I believe that PAI, P-A-I, use um, CO2 extraction for their rosehip oil, um, which means that it's a lot more unrefined. Um, so that's cold pressed. So I think it is really important that things are, the oils are cold pressed and even better if they are extracted using CO2. Talking rubbish, I've got five oils here to talk about, um, including that vitamin F, and I have used all of them. <laughs> Let's first talk about which ones are stable and which ones are unstable. Um, and there is a relationship to the whether they are saturated or unsaturated, but it's not quite as straightforward as they are saturated, therefore they are stable or unsaturated, unstable. Um, but out of the ones we are talking about, there are only two stable oils. Um, marula oil is one of them. This is the 100% cold pressed virgin marula oil. That is a stable oil. And the other one is squalane. So if you are looking for something that you know you're only gonna use a couple of drops now and then in skincare and you want it to last a long time on your shelf then these are the ones for you squalane and marula oil um, the vitamin f which is the essential fatty acids i have to say that i can't 100 percent confirm either way but from what i can tell they are stable and so i think this is a stable solution um, but I, I can't find an awful lot of information on whether essential fatty acids are stable or not but i think they are i think it's unlikely that you would be using the vitamin f specifically for an as an oil anyway but it's just in case you are um, then you've got argan and rosehip oil and these are both unstable oils so if you are using these just be aware that as soon as you start using them the quicker you use them the better keep them I mean, you could keep them in the fridge, you could keep them in a dark place anyway, um, keep them away from window ledges, away from the sun, um, and away from radiators, things like that. Coconut is, an, is another stable oil. Jojoba is a fairly stable oil as well, but pretty much everything else is unstable. Okay, so as with the vitamin C, I'm going to go through each oil, tell you what I thought about it, tell you the price um, and a few properties about it, um, and then at the end, I'll tell you what is best for if you want budget, if you want the most stable, if you want, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so why should you use oils in the first place? Well, for dry and, dehydrated, dry and dehydrated skin, it can work wonders to take the dryness away and to rehydrate the skin. But also for oily skin, it help, can help balance out the skin. Um, I have really only used coconut oil. Um, I didn't find that coconut oil did anything for my skin. Either way, it wasn't bad, it wasn't good, it just, didn't really contribute anything to my skin. This, the oil that I did love was the Clarins Lotus Oil, um, which is specifically for oily skin. What we're talking about is the 100% cold pressed virgin marula oil. Virgin um, just means unrefined. As I talked about unrefined, virgin means that it is minimally processed, basically. Um, so the marula oil, this one is £8.10. Um, this one is also vegetarian. They do say on it whether they're vegetarian or not. This one has no scent and is a good one for dry skin, very good for dry skin. This one is a thick feeling oil and I personally don't like it. I'll show you what it's like. 
So that's what it looks like. You won't be able to tell an awful lot from me showing you the formulas here. Um, but this is not one that will quickly absorb. Um, you know, this is going to leave your skin with an oily feel. And I did not like that at all. Um, and this one broke me out. I think I would have used this. I would have continued using this Marula oil if I could use a moisturiser, well, no, not if I could, using a moisturiser on top of it, if it hadn't have broken me out. But I used it for the first time. Whoops, I've now just flicked it everywhere. I used it for the first time and the following morning I woke up and I had a little white head on my chin and I was like, oh my goodness, it's a long time since I've had one of those. Perhaps it was that Marula oil. So I stopped using it for, I don't know, three or four days and my skin was fine. I then used it again and the following morning, almost in the same place, I had another white another white head. So I'm pretty sure it's this that, that broke me out. And from the mix of um, oleic and linoleic oils in this, this oil, it makes sense to me that it did break me out. And that's, again, you're looking for something, if you have oily skin, then you're looking for something that has high levels of linoleic acid. If you have dry skin, you're looking for something that has high levels of oleic acid. Um, again, it's not always quite that simple, but that contributes to whether something will break you out or not. Um, and so this one is one that I think you need to be wary of if you've got acne prone skin, but if you've got dry, non-acne prone skin, I think you'll love it. I should also mention about this Marula oil that it does have good antioxidant properties and it has no scent whatsoever, um, which is nice because some of them smell a bit odd. <laughs> Next on the list is the Argan oil and this is my almost empty bottle. There's a tiny amount in here, probably enough to just get a couple of drops, yeah. Um, and this is the first one that I have tried and I really enjoy this one and I've actually bought a new bottle of this. I would say that the Marula oil is a thick feeling oil and I would say that the Argan oil is a medium feeling oil, if that makes sense. I need a new word for that. Medium isn't quite right, but whereas some oils are a dry oil and then Marula is the complete opposite, it's very oily. Argan to me is somewhere in between. It just feels very nice going on the skin. I'm quite happy using this on its own or under a moisturizer. Um, yeah, really like this one. So it is organic, cold pressed. I think it's also vegetarian, yes. £5.90 for this, so a really, really good price. The downside is it's a um, unstable oil. It's a very unstable oil. The extraction process for argan oil is extremely complex and very hard to get right. Um, and so apparently a lot of companies sell argan oil, but you have a look at them and they're not actually argan oil. If you look at the ingredients, there's only a tiny amount of argan oil in it it's because of it's expensive and difficult to extract. So they don't get, you know, they don't buy much. Um, so I don't know, I haven't noticed that myself, but then I've never really been looking at oils that closely. Um, it's probably like, I know certainly with, I know this is nothing to do with skincare, but with my dog, when I'm buying treats for him, I now know if, if it says beef across it, I still need to look at the ingredients. And you can look at the ingredients and they can be 99% chicken and 1% beef stock. <laughs> Uh, it has nothing to do with what's in it. And I think that's what they're saying, that you might get a product that says argan oil, but it might be in tiny print with argan oil. So really make sure that you are getting 100% argan oil if that's what you want to use. So this is anti-aging and antioxidant and good for all skin types. There's not, um, it's not an oil known to break you out. Like I said, I haven't had any breakouts from it. Um, and this one should be good for all skin types, including sensitive. Um, so that's the argan oil. Oh, one more thing about the argan oil as well. Um, and I should have said it for the marula oil. You can use both of these on your hair as well. And so for the marula oil, that's how I'm going to use it. I'm not, I haven't worked out how yet. I don't know whether I'll just put a little bit in my hand and rub it on the ends of my hair, see how it works like that. But you can use both of these on your hair as well as your skin. The argan oil to me when I got it, yeah, it still does a little bit. It smells like cow pat or smelt like cow pat. But after a couple of evenings of using it, I no longer noticed it. I think you become nose blind, as the advert says, and you stop smelling things as strongly as you did before. Thankfully, my husband didn't think it smelled like that um, and he can't smell it anymore either. But it's not, it's not a pleasant smell, it's just how it smells. And I think you can get argan oils that smell nutty, but they are processed in a different way. Um, but yeah, it does have a bit of nonsense. Next we have rosehip oil, which I suspect is one of the most popular. This is one that I resisted getting because of the fish smell. I have had rosehip oils over the years from many different brands and they've all smelled of fish and I just didn't like it. But I thought, you know what, give it a try and see if you can get over the smell and use it for a couple of days. Um, and that's exactly what happened. I don't smell it anymore. I put it on my, my face and I don't 
smell the fishy smell. Um, however, there are people that believe that if it smells of fish, it's gone off already. And this is a very unstable oil. And that's something to mention as a huge con of this oil. Very, very unstable. We'll go rancid very quickly. The shelf life at most is two to three months. Um, better kept in the fridge. Um, but like I said, some people believe that it should have a bit of a, a lighter, um, more sort of herby, fruity type smell if it hasn't gone off. I would say that this is a medium to light feeling oil. It's one that I'd be happy to use on its own. I wouldn't need to put a moisturizer on top. And like I said, I, I don't put a moisturizer on top necessarily for any reason other than to take that sort of oily feeling away. So with the marula oil, I would definitely do that or I would mix it in with my um, night cream or whatever. But this one, I'd be happy to use it on its own. Um, I'm gonna look a little bit more into the, if it smells of a fishy odor, it, has it gone off? Um, and if I find anything out by the time I've published this video, then I will put it in the, the description below um, because that is a concern to me. I can't figure out why it would smell of fish. I haven't ever had one that hasn't. I know that some people won't smell the fish in it because we've always got different scents. So it's not like I can say to you, oh, have you ever had one that didn't smell a fish? Because it might just be that you don't smell what other people smell. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about, but I know that it's an unstable oil. For, so for that reason, I probably wouldn't repurchase this one anyway. Um, what else did I want to tell you about? It's organic, cold pressed, vegetarian. Oh, it does say it's vegetarian. This one is best for anti-aging and pigmentation. And so this one does have trace amounts of tretinoin in it. That's something I know that is of huge interest. It doesn't have vitamin A in it. It has trace amounts of tretinoin. So you can't use this instead of anything that you're using in that realm. You can't use it instead of retinol because it isn't retinol. It doesn't have retinol in it. It has trace amounts of tretinoin. Um, and trace amounts mean that there's you're barely going to see any effect. Where it would be good is if you are starting using this in your early 20s say and using it for life then there may be some cumulative effect from it but otherwise no but it is a good antioxidant anti-aging anti-pigmentation oil um, but like i said very unstable okay next is squalane um squalane this one is five pound fifty it is 100 plant derived squalane and it is vegetarian it doesn't say on here but it does say on the website this is like a new sort of wonder oil, if you like, that is antioxidant, anti-aging, what else is it? Healing, it's a healing oil. Um, it's got a lot of really good properties. This is just an all round good oil. Sorry, I'm wriggling about because my knee is really, really hurting. I'm not sure what to do about it. I need to go and take some painkillers. This one is a stable oil this and coconut oil are the two most stable oils out there. So if you're looking for one that you want to know 100% works it's not going to go off you don't have to keep it in the fridge you can keep it for as long as you like this is the one for you because it's stable um it is for all skin types especially acne prone and sensitive no problems with sensitive skin or acne prone skin um what else is there to tell you about it it's really important to tell you that this is plant derived see how they've put plant derived squalane Squalane is made from squalene so it's very um important that you see there is two oils there's squalene and squalane. Squalane is made from squalene and that can come from sharks, from their livers, I believe, um, and it can also come from plants. Um, and so this is why this is plant derived. It means that it is not taken from animals. It is a very thin and very light oil. It's a clear oil. You can see it's very water-like. It didn't take long to come out at all. It will drip down and it is. it feels like a dry oil. And so you can see I've rubbed it in and that's it gone. I have heard from people where I've mentioned squalane and they've they've replied to me or I'm looking at blogs and things like that. People love this oil. I personally don't like the feeling Just of it. One that I don't, I, I've never really liked the feeling of a dry oil. I, if I'm going to use an oil, I want to feel that baby soft skin, that sort of, you know, when I'm putting my fingers on, I can move my fingers around because it feels really not heavy like the marula oil, but like the argan oil. That's the kind of oil that I like. So for me personally, it, it's not great, but that don't let that affect you at all because most people I've read, I haven't read anybody else that doesn't like the feeling of the squalane oil. Um, so I think I'm probably the odd one out. Let me know if you have tried it and don't particularly like it. I will absolutely continue to use this though. I might add a couple of drops into any night cream I'm using um, or I might just use it under a night cream because it doesn't feel on its own moisturizing enough to me. Although it is a great hydrator, um, people have used it for 
I read at one blog where she was saying she used it for her lips and under eyes and then there was somebody, one of my viewers actually said she uses it for exactly that on her lips and under eyes and that it's really good for that. So I think it's a fantastic oil, I really do. It's just personally not my favorite oil. The good thing about this Squalane is I can actually put it away in my drawer and ignore it because it is one that's so stable that I don't need to worry about that. Um, and I'm gonna end up probably giving some of this skincare to my mum and whatnot, you know. Um, the other thing about this is you can also use this on your hair. So I could try this on my hair and see if I prefer using it that way. Um, it's another one of those multi-purpose oils. The final one to talk about is this vitamin F that I talked about. And this is the vitamin C derivative in vitamin F, which basically means essential fatty acids. And as I've said, from what I can tell, um, combined with antioxidants, I think this is stable uh, because it has vitamin C derivative in it. It has an antioxidant in it, um, but I'm not 100% sure. I would say that this is a it's another oil like squalane and actually this formula has squalane in it so it's another dry feeling oil so quite a light one um, and like I said I wanted to tell you about this because you may want to combine ingredients that appeals to me actually using an oil and a vitamin C and getting them both in the one you know that that does appeal to me it's a derivative not vitamin C I know um, what else have I to tell you about this one? Oh, you can use it for all skin types and it's got antioxidants obviously in it, it's got the vitamin C. Yeah, there's some goods and good and bad about this, which I think I already talked about in the vitamin C video, but it's got coconut alkanes in it, which means that it could make you break out. I haven't had any breakouts from this at all, um, but it also has jojoba oil in it, which is really good for oily skin. So I think this is one of those that you would have to try and see and see what you think. This one is £14.90 though, so the most expensive of all of them, but of course you're getting the combination in there. That's everything to tell you about each individual oil. Let me tell you what's best for you if you have any specific requirements. So the best for a budget are the Argan oil and the Squalane if you're looking for the most inexpensive. If you have oily or acne prone skin, then the Squalane I thought somebody knocked at the door there and the dog walker is due. The squalane is best for oily acne prone skin, but also um, jojoba oil is, but obviously they don't do a jojoba oil. For dry skin, pretty much any of them, but I think the marula oil, I think you would really love that if you've got dry skin. Um, but the squalane, that's pretty much gonna appear in every category, is also good for dry skin. Um, pigmented or mature would be the argan, the rose hip, or the vitamin F. Um, and then sensitive skin would be, like I said, it's gonna appear everywhere, the squalane, brilliant for sensitive skin, or coconut oil is also good for sensitive skin. And if you want a stable oil, then it is the squalane. So obviously this is the winner. Um, the winner, as in the best all round oil is squalane, but for me, I like the argan oil. Um, and so I'm quite happy to use this but understand that it's very unstable. I haven't been keeping it in the fridge and perhaps I should, um, but it's just, it's a bit of a pain, isn't it? So that's everything about the oils that are available from the Ordinary Skincare. So I hope that that was enjoyable and that you maybe learnt something. Let me know which one you're gonna use. I'm interested to see which oils people are going for. I suspect they will come out with more oils um, because there are so many different types of oil on the market. Um, that I feel like they will come out with more. And if they do, I will most likely buy them and review them for you. Um, I will list all of my makeup in the description for you. The thing that I am proud of is, I'm proud of the way I'm being with Watson. And it's an awful long story, so I won't go into it, but I'm learning to make him rest more, if you like, um, and not be quite so fussy over him. And so I'm proud of myself for that because it's a really difficult thing to do. Watson is my labradoodle for those of you that don't know. Um, so let me know what you are proud of. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Oh, I've just drawn biro on my boob. What gets biro off? Oh, for goodness sake.